Hello and welcome to section four, part two of ITIL for Specialist High Velocity IT Certification Training Program from One World Training. In this section, we will focus on techniques for resilient operations. And uh, for some of the other objectives as well, we will focus on their techniques. Resilient operations. Digital products should be available for use whenever needed. Failure is inevitable, but preparation is necessary. Emphasis, therefore, is on faster restoration of service as compared to time between failures. Overall resilience is determined by the resilience of individual components. Lack of resilience may cause loss of revenue, reduction of pricing, additional support costs and damage to reputation. Resilient systems are an expectation due to consumerization of IT and availability of the cloud. Resilience is related to the following, availability, performance, and security. Availability is a percentage and the mean time between failures and mean time to restore. The availability percentage is difficult to measure and usually unreliable. Performance, time to load a web page, to execute a data query, or to complete a batch process, etc. Security, number of breaches, maturity of control monitoring, ability to analyze logs to identify risks and breaches, etc. Let us take an example of availability, a metric that is. Telling a customer downtime was 2% using some formula does not have any meaning unless the impact of the 2% downtime is understood. Frequency for each downtime duration, user productivity downtime, not system or service downtime, etc. Meaning it need, one needs to be very clear on what the downtime really connects with. Which means while it may be okay to understand the overall system downtime or a service downtime, but more important is to understand for each downtime duration, how frequently that happened. For example, how many times a two minute outage happened or a five minute outage or a 10 minute outage happened. These have to be separately recorded. Similarly, what was the downtime for the user productivity rather than just the service or system not available? Some of the techniques which may be used for resilient operations are technical debt, chaos engineering, definition of done, version control, AI ops, chat ops, and site reliability engineering or SRE. In this section, we will also look at the techniques for co-creation of value and assured conformance, not just resilient operations. In a previous sections, we have covered techniques for fast development and valuable investments. Note that these five topics are extremely important for the exam. These five uh, topics and their connections with the practices carry about 24 marks out of the 40 marks in the exam. And the practices connected with them have a high weightage out of the 24 marks. Firstly, the technical debt. This is the total backlog accumulated by choosing workarounds instead of system solutions that would take longer. Meaning, technical debt occurs because of a quick fix developed to speed up a slow application, which may lead to data corruption, which needs to be fixed afterwards. So that's an example of how technical debt gets created. The word debt is important. So it's a accumulated list of issues when Workarounds instead of proper solutions are being used like quick fix, for example, instead of a proper fix. The backlog that is required to fix damage incurred when repairing or enhancing software. A proper fix for a workaround may never be developed. However, technical debt should be minimized in such cases. Technical debt can also occur during software development when deadlines lead to shortcuts. It is therefore the cost involved to improve the software plus cost of the related incidents. Debt is acceptable to some extent until it accumulates to an unacceptable result uh, level. Which means that from time to time, the technical debt should be removed. Some organizations do the continual 
or continuous technical debt removal. And some do it at certain points in time, maybe quarterly, for example. Software entropy is very relevant to HVID due to large software investments and the need to change quickly due to market demands. Software entropy is the decline in software quality when changes are made to it. Reducing this technical debt leads to fewer incidents and resilient operations. It also contributes to valuable investments and fast development. Technical debt should be recognized, qualified and quantified. It's short and long-term risks assessed and decisions made as part of software product management, including a budget to repay the technical debt. Relevant practices for technical debt. In this section in particular, the techniques for resilient operations, co-created value and assured conformance, we will see several tables like these. These are very important tables for the exam, which means you must understand how each practice connects with each technique for a certain objective. Objective means, for example, in this case, resilient operations. And there's a lot of text here. I will be reading them briefly, but please do study them and make sure you know them well for the exam. For technical debt, you have got the service desk, project management, knowledge management, risk management, information security management, and business analysis. What are the activities associated with technical debt from every practice? In the service desk, it is about the user communication related to the debt. Project management is about planning technical debt removal projects. Knowledge management is about keeping information up to date regarding the debt. Risk management is about understanding the impact of this debt. Information security management is about whether certain controls create debt or whether debts lead to breach of controls. Business analysis is about understanding the impact of the debt on requirements and solutions. There are many more practices applicable. Portfolio management is about making decisions regarding investments for fixing this debt. Infrastructure and platform management is about the connection to creating and modifying components in order to reduce the debt. Software development management is about creating or modifying components to reduce this debt. Problem management is about management of the debt by applying problem management. For example, a root cause analysis of problems. Continual improvement is about identifying, prioritizing and managing efforts connected to this debt. Incident management is about resolving incidents regarding the, which are connected to technical debt. Please note that we will also look at the practices individually afterwards. There are around 17 practices in the HUIT syllabus. Next technique is chaos engineering. This is the discipline of experimenting on a system in order to build confidence in the system's capability to withstand turbulent conditions in production. Please note this carefully. This is about experimentation on on the systems, particularly production systems, whether these systems can withstand turbulent conditions. The four steps of chaos engineering, define the steady state or the results of normal behavior. Assume that the steady state behavior will continue. However, introduce variables that reflect real world events and try to disprove the assumption. This requires caution because experimenting with production systems should not lead to major outages. Though there may be some notification about the experimentation and there may be small glitches here and there, which may be okay, but it should not lead to, such experimentation should not lead to major several hours of outages on critical applications. 